Okay, uh, looks like the meeting has come to order at 6.15, April 8th, 24. The open meeting laws conformity is up to snuff. The yep. uh, minutes were posted correctly and all that, so we're good to go. Uh, the prior minutes, minute, uh, <coughs> meeting minutes were uh, March 25th. I've read them and they look good to me, so I'll take a second. I move we accept it. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. In the meeting to 4-4, uh, we had a hearing about the school and what those minutes. I've read through them and they look all right. Very comprehensive. Very yeah. Long. There's there's a it's an encyclopedia. <laughs> I have to make sure I got it all. <laughs> you got a lot of it. <laughs> I second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. All right. And then we had the select board minutes for that same day of four four. Yes. And those were seemed to be in good order and and good. So I. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So. We've got guest here, uh, Brian Kovlik, 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 Kovlik. Not on Zoom. Oh, Two Rivers. Okay, we'll no, move on. <clears throat> Wendy Stender, Twin Town Baseball. Uh, Are you here for that one? Town Baseball. Yep. Town Baseball Field Use Request. <clears throat> That's what we have. That's right. So you want to explain what you want to do? Um, yeah, traditionally we've been using the field behind the school, and um, that actually for quite a while now has been in sort of a state of uh, deterioration. It's really lumpy. Um, we've tried to have, uh, like we had Ray Harvey at one point, um, roll it, and it didn't really help it a whole lot. <clears throat> it, and it's just, um, it's just not as pleasant of an area as it is over by the tennis courts. I mean, it's a very nice, nice field, nice park-like atmosphere, and we'd like to uh, pretty much transfer the kiddies over there um, if it's okay. And it'll be sort of a process for for all that to happen as well. Um, I noticed that field is also lumpy, but not as bad. Um, I, th I think it, in, in the long term, we, we'd have to come up with some sort of uh, uh, process. I, I know that like Randolph aerates their fields every now and then. I don't know how often. Um, Frank, you're, you're a farmer of sorts. You might know how to keep fields nice and flat. Um, hey, don't let the river flood them. <laughs> yeah, actually, probably, probably flattens them nicely. Um, but but at, at this point, like the, the field next to the uh, high school is downright dangerous. You know, a, a kid can sprain an ankle, you get bad hops to the face. You know, it's sort of. I um, think you want to be careful on that field, what you do to it, because I think you're fine. That's the septic system for yeah, the high school. I was going to say. So that. you aren't going to be able to do what you want to do, and you mm. shouldn't be rolling that. But at that's all. not the one you're talking about. No, they wanted to do the big well, field down there. Kind of courts. Right. My what only are you issue. Talking about what are, you, are you planning on? Uh, Using the present system that's there, like the backstop and all that, that was set up for high school yeah, baseball it is, and all that. Yeah, that, that is set up for high school. That does present an issue because most of the kids, actually the kids this year are only T-ball and rookies, which is the next league up. All the kids are under eight years old. Um, so it's not going to be like official. We don't really need an official diamond at this point. Um, we we want to eventually get back to a minor league team and have a have a diamond, but we have time to sort of move into that. Can you use the lower softball field? Yeah, that was a consideration as well. I haven't really looked closely at it, but yes, the the softball dimensions are perfect for little kids. Right. So um, that that's kind of why I'm requesting either field, the, the close high school field or the softball field farther down. I, I would think the softball uh, field, I think that you had softball tournaments there uh, earlier on the high school field and you rearranged the high school field a little bit to match for eight. the softball tournament, yeah. is that correct? Yes. 
So that may be already laid out for whatever, yeah. if you're not going <clears> to... <throat> might be a situation where you can just rake it, too, if it's, <coughs> if it's right. a dirt infield, right? Is it holding up yeah. dirt? Yeah. So you can keep that naturally flat. <clears throat> what are the dates of the seasons? Um, the Roughly. first game will be either the 27th of April or the 4th of May, and they it will run through... At the latest, the 8th of June, Saturday, the 8th of June. Um, the, it it uh, automatically, one way or another, it'll end before the end of the school year. So it's a real quick season. Okay. Uh, most of the games will be on Saturday mornings. I don't, I don't know if you have a, a cutting schedule. I know in May, in May the grass grows like crazy. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know if. Yeah, we don't. Uh, technically, yeah. but uh, hopefully they can avoid Saturday mornings. Yeah, and he he usually does it during the week, I think. But we also weren't cutting it as, as often. often because nobody would use it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So we were letting him not have to do it quite so often, especially last year because there's rain and so much. Is there a way to spot cut it? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> well, he'll we can have him cut it. You know. It, a, the, it is a short season. To the contract, yeah. and that's, I think, once yeah. a week. So it, it is once a week? I, that, that, I believe I, so. Yeah, I, actually, contract. I'm sure whatever, however you cut it, it'll I, be... I think the contract is once a week. It'll be a better situation than the school because their you know, custodial department was overwrought. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't see any problem with mm -hmm. what doing that as long as you, you know, you don't... <clears throat> ruin it for baseball or anything. I think to start out with, do you get a handle on what you want to do and maybe utilize the softball field that's there or, or yeah. come up with a different plan, I think is probably way to go for this year. <coughs> Figure I think it out and They're get away from the school, school property, end of it. Or is that town property behind the high school? That's, that's school, still school property. I think that's school property, property but that, so it's hard to maintain that without a school is there any? Is there any insurance thing when you go no, from the school to the town? We have official Cal Ripken insurance. We pay the big bucks okay. for the uh, to be insured, for, for our baseball teams to be insured. So transferring away from a schoolyard isn't going yeah, to Yeah, it shouldn't you. be a problem. Okay. It'll probably be Just more wanted to clear. bring that up. That's a good point. The fire department, are you planning on using these fields during these times? Nope. So if they do some reconfiguration, you, would you be able to unreconfigure to your needs? Or? Yeah, we'll be fine. Actually, they're confi the softball, it's more of a softball configuration at the um, large high school field as well, too. So right. we sort of fit into that. The fire department did a lot of work on those fields for their tournaments. So mm -hmm. I, I just don't want to cancel that all out. Yeah, at some they, point. They did they it actually, for free. <laughs> they actually yeah. rearranged the baseball yeah, diamond to fit the softball. <clears throat> yeah, no, nothing baseball. will be canceled out. If anything, it will be enhanced right. now that there's two right. groups. That they both it's being used a little more. They both have the same dimensions. Soft, uh, softball is the same dimensions as Cal mm -hmm. baseball. Mm -hmm. Bring your pooper scooper. That's right. We'll be discussing that a little <laughs> bit later here. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't see any problem with it. I don't see any problem. I've asked all my concerns away. So. All right. Well, thank you. Yep. And there's an, nobody from Two Rivers yet? Um, no. Okay. Uh, He's up in Burlington trying to get here. Oh, no. no. For this for the capital budget? I'm, yeah. He's up, he's up in Burlington. <laughs> um, I guess we'll... We'll uh, not do any appointments tonight until no, we get a full, full, a full board. board. And a formally adopting the Declaration of Inclusion. Mm -hmm. no, and that was reworded or re yeah. done. Correct, but it was accepted at town meeting. Correct. And then they wanted to have it formally adopted. Uh, yes. Yep. Yeah. So I guess, Pat, you and I can formally adopt this? Yes. <clears throat> so it is the town's wishes. I would uh, move that we adopt this. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So let's see what's in the date today is 4 8 24.
So is the issue that you're promoting? And Mr. Threlkill, the walking path pet waste, is he here? No, we we're just going to make an announcement so that people know that the walking path down by the river is getting very bad. And when he came to the office to talk to us about it, Kristen put it in the Friday notification um, email just to let people know mm -hmm. to be more conscious of cleaning up after their pets. And it was a reminder to me that we had talked about um, these pet stations and maybe now is a good time to put them up actually with some additional sign. But when I looked at the walking path, there are signs. He's, um, the Threlkas have added signs, but there's also our signs um, down by the tennis courts. Right. But I didn't know if maybe we needed additional signs down by the river. I, and to let people know they need to keep the right keep I, it cleaned up we discussed these pet waste things before and like and the biggest uh problem we had with them was who's going to manage them well this was just going to be for us to buy the bags not to do the um wait we wouldn't do the waste like disposals the right the right we, we just talked about in previous meetings about just the bags. supply in the bags yep where what what do you having a dispenser for them down there is that what you're thinking so i think they that, yeah that, that was like at? a dis at? yeah they were what like 90 dollars for the dispenser yeah that only does bags mm -hmm. i yeah i i don't know i, like I think that. we need to have more discussion on that because i just concerned about if we put those up we're just going to get bags piled up at the bottom of them after they were used and that's my biggest concern. Mm -hmm. I mean, people don't have moral sanity to take care of their pet waste, then I don't know how to address it other than to just keep hammering the fact that, you know, we and can post no dogs or something. That's all we can do. But I <laughs> I would hate to do that. Right. And, and, <laughs> yeah. and we're just... <laughs> it's, 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 put a big sign up there saying... He, if you don't take care of your dogs, we're going to lose. They're thinking, right. like, his wife wants to close it. Like, it, she's it, over it. it gets, yeah, I, so, and I don't blame That's really unfortunate. Bad. Yeah. And I don't blame You can go down there and see who's doing that. I know. Yeah. We, we all know who's doing it, but it's not. <clears throat> but but we, I know if we can just. Can we send them a letter? We can. I'll send we, them all. I think we, if we write it up in the paper. I'll mention and make, it again. And mention it, it. And, and then know. go from there to start with and see what happens. But. Maybe people will start. There's a lot of people that do take care of their dog waste, but there is. But there's it, and there's a lot. But there's a, a bunch that don't. Yeah, and, and you'll find that on your baseball field because I've <laughs> seen it happen. Mm. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of disgusting, really. Because these trails go so close to the White River, would the White River Partnership um, have an opinion about this? Um, it, it it is phosphorus in dog poop and they're trying to keep that out of the rivers so perhaps they would be interested in helping us with these dog stations or something of the sort well the, the one problem i see with that is simply that's private property too and we that, really that particular are, strip there but our whole, trails are on both ends of that that whole thing is on somebody else's land and we're lucky that we are able to use it is there really. any way of putting a sign up that dogs cannot be on the playing fields you can put signs up but it's like yeah, anything. No, it's not how many to, signs do you want you around know, town you can't you can't and who are you going to have fix pick it. up after them well that's what i'm um, that's what i'm saying excuse me yes go ahead martha um, does this include, it looks like from the agenda that maybe you're talking about the park as well, pet waste on the park? It, any place in town, really. Uh, it's do we on the park. I can't remember, do we have signs on the park? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, is that a problem? I haven't been on the park in a while, so I don't know it's, if, it's, if it's been a problem recently. It's not a major problem. There is occasional people that don't pick up after their pet but most of it's down by the 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 uh, yeah. playing fields down at the rec center and out here in the 
town office yard too. Especially in the springtime after the snow melts, mm -hmm. you find all the gifts that were left oh. behind all winter. It's mm -hmm. terrible out here. Yes, it is. So it's just people need to pick up. And I guess if we make it more known and, and we should post it on the website mm -hmm. and yeah. say we, we'll, mm -hmm. we're going to lose the, the privilege of having a hiking dog trail down there by the river if, mm -hmm. if this continues. And so the people are not happy, the, the trail killed, who give us permission to use that down there for a trail. Um, they're not happy. That includes the road, too. I mean, it's yeah. not just oh, a trail. Yeah. Yeah. I know. The path all the, all the way around their property is it's all there. So yeah, Do we have I any know. control over dog license fees? Over dog license fees? Fees. You when you license your dog. Is that set by us or the state? state, state it's set by the state. We can't. We can change like the town's portion of it. We could. If um, we if yeah. we were to purchase those, we could probably recoup the funds by adding fifty mm -hmm. cents to each dog license. Yep. Can Something to consider to in the, the future. Dog ordinance. <clears throat> yeah. So I think we'll just uh, go with what we're we talked about doing there, posted on the website, and Martha can put it in the paper, and we'll mention it in the minutes, and go from there. Yeah, just it's, try to keep actively talking about it and reminding people, I guess. Right, to start with, and we'll see. I, don't I mean, mind. it is a problem. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Carry ours too. <laughs> I need it here. Uh, <laughs> I can leave it for you. And you got a, uh, the next on the uh, list there is the Tri Town Baseball Account Discussion. Do you have? Yeah, that's for me. Oh, um, that is. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a there's been this small account over at the credit union um, titled um, Tri Town Baseball. Um, it started like a while ago with like Norm Pratt. Um, some people started it, and then like people lost contact with it and then it sort of got brought up again with like Tim Pratt and it's just it's good and everything but it's just kind of been a sore over there with not a lot of people knowing like who's in charge of what and there's like no checks and there was a checking and a savings and blah 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 so we started the process sort of just by moving by like closing the checking account well it's still open but we don't use it um and there's no money in it so now there's like three I don't know how many maybe like three thousand dollars over in the tri-town baseball only savings account i um would like to put forth a request to move that account over to mascoma with the other reserve accounts keeping it the tri-town baseball but just having it over at mascoma um they're starting to um put it like donations like scholarships and stuff they're starting to actively use this a little more often and then they also want to be able to purchase things with it so having those funds over at mascoma in their own reserve fund um or it doesn't even have to be a reserve fund it can be an account whatever however you guys want to do it but it would make it easier so then as they spend i can just transfer the money into the general fund and cut checks right now i can't do anything with it over there is there any uh <laughs> rules that we have to go by to do that i mean as far as is that just a select board decision yes i've checked with like i did the research back a couple of years ago with like who started it and who right. was in charge of it um it used to be you know tim pratt was very much in charge of it and then his name got taken off and it was put into the town of rochester's name um and always promised to be used just as tritown baseball stuff um so I propose that we still do the same, um, but I'm requesting that we move it to Mascoma where it can be used more properly and efficiently. Bring forward the paperwork. Yeah. Submit what, what, you, what we got to sign to get it over there. Do uh, it. Nothing. I just need okay. you to okay it, and then we would submit um, the meeting minutes to the credit union in order to close out that account. They cut me a check, and then I open it with Mascoma. And who would be the signature parties on this account? Um, I would assume me and Julie, like we are on all the other ones. And right. if anybody else, that we're the only two signers on the credit union right now. Yep. So. I, yeah, I don't see any problem with it. That sounds like a good idea to 
Okay. We'll I'll do. come back to report like when it's done, just so everybody knows that it's there. And then now right. also it'll be kind of nice because it'll be clear to the townspeople. It'll now be in the budget. Like people can see it as a reserve and um, right. it's just a little more clear for everybody. So I think it's right. good. Hidden, hidden dollars. Yep. Yep. Thank you. So that, that's about 3000 in there? Um, now with Lindy's recent donations, yes. Oh, I don't yep. know of those donations. Yeah. I don't even know who, who's Lindy. It's not Lindy, it's Wendy. Oh, Wendy. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, Wendy's <laughs> donations with the uh, the sponsors. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh, I see. She oh, did okay. great. So, uh, yeah. That And she's still got some more, so, yeah. I deposited okay. those for her and last week, and then that's how this all sort of came up, because she was like, can I use some of that to buy something? And then I couldn't get my hands on the money. Yeah. So, um, this would okay, so that, and that, that's separate, that's going to be kept separate from the recreational reserve Correct. account. Yep, just okay. like it always has been, no changes in the usage. Yep, it'll be used Sounds for good. baseball. It's baseball only. Yep, right. yep. Tim was big in baseball. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and we want to keep it that way. Yeah, so that's the way it should be. It was, yep. it was like kind of around his. And it was yes. the Pratt, you know, it's always been Pratt. called the Pratt Fund, and by all means, right. we can call it that when I move it over to Mascoma, too, so. Right. Yeah, they got, they had the first chunk of donations in there was from the the funeral, um, Norm Pratt's funeral. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> and I'll report back when that's completed. Yep. Okay. And then we got the outdoor consumption to... Huntington House? Huntington House. Application. We have to sign that anyway? No, it no. just has to be approved. Just, it just has to be approved? I don't see that. Is it? Um, is there a time limit on it? Yeah, yeah it's coming up. Um, a lot of them right now, you've seen so many come through, but a lot of them are due like at the end of April, beginning of May. No, a time limit on time. Their consumption time, like they have to be 10 done p.m. 10 p.m. Yep. It's yep. not. It's not. Does it show up on this application? No, I right. usually write it in my minute. Please my do. Yep. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Make sure I, they know that. I yep, move we approve that. Yep. Then I second. Right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. How you doing? Good, how are you, sir? Pretty good. I guess uh, you just jumped in, but we're getting down to the department reports. Do you want to speak? Uh, yes, I would, actually, if you don't yep. mind. No, I don't uh, mind at all. My name's John Lambert. I've been here for a dog issue. You're right. Uh, and Have I'm, you had any luck with that? I'm actually here to thank you. Oh. You directly. Okay. Um, well, thank you. Because you have followed through what I asked, and I am now in contact with the sheriffs directly on this. So thank you very much for doing as we spoke about. You're welcome. Um, I have one little request that I would like to make change for your minutes on uh, the last one that went out in the newspaper. Sure. Um, it states in there that Dune Hendricks was the one who took the initiative to get in contact with everybody yep. and to send the letter. Uh, after the February meeting, Board Chair Dune Hendricks had sent the dog's owner a letter about the town's leash law. I would like to make it clear that Dune did not send that letter. It was actually Julie Smith that did that for me. Okay. Thank you, Julie. Okay. Yep. Um, on top of that, in the midst of the, the dog incidents, um, and we're still dealing with this, just right. so we all are aware have, of this. Have you had good luck with the sheriff and all so that? So far, they're, they're, they're doing what they can do. We've had many of instances right now that they just can't get there. Right. They're trying. Yep. They've been there and spoke to me. They've got my information. They just have not been able to get back there. Um, with that being said, we're going on to Janu from January till now on this incident of mine, mind you. In Easter, just this past Easter, just now, while I was not on the property, of course, I'm grateful I wasn't because my kids would have been outside playing too, another child was chased and a third child was knocked down and nipped again up there. Right. So I just want you to be aware that this is an ongoing thing, you know, more leash issues. Did you relay on. that to the... I've 
got sheriffs and everything. Oh, You've yes, got, yes, 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 I mean, sir. I just have to ask that. Yes, sir. Yep. No, yes. I have. But so with that being said, I, I anybody who has that issue in this town has nowhere to go. They have no clue it's the sheriffs they need to speak to unless they've seen what I've gone right. through. So uh, I bring up some issues. Um, just, I hate to be this way, but it, it does. It brings up some issues. Um, I'd like to know uh, what is or why do we have a budget for a health and safety person, constables one and two, and an animal control humane officer. If those people can't be used in these situations, just curious. Um, and you guys can get back to me on this. Right. I'm, I'm going to put this forward just because I really think we need to know. Um, they have no training, is what I was told. Right. So. If there's no training, why are these people in these positions and we have a budget for these positions? I think it's been a long-term event that that has been that way forever. And the rules and laws have changed so in the past, mm -hmm. you know, 10 years or 15. I don't know when they've changed that drastically, but they have changed. And mm -hmm. it used to be that if you had a dog ordinance and you had a an animal control officer there was no training involved the animal control officer went to the people that animal was causing the issue they talked to him and the people were respectful enough to take care of it that way mm -hmm. and so now the rules are so much different that anytime you have these people like we have mm -hmm. they have to in order to be have any teeth, they have to go through all this training. Well, most of these people that we have in in our books like that are appointed. So, you know, we're just finding somebody that would be willing to even go visit somebody that has a pet issue, for mm -hmm. instance. And that's really why they're in there. So I, I understand. Yeah, go ahead, Nance. If the you health can. officer, I think, is required by the state of Vermont Department of Health. Okay. Uh, constables are required by statutes, but they carry no weight mm -hmm. unless they've had certified training. Right. What was the other one? Animal, uh, control. Animal, control. Animal control. Animal control is just, you, you right, you dealt with that. Right. But some of them are statute-driven, like the constables. But unless the constable has certification, which means going to, um, what is it, Pittsford to, to state police training, right? The, it's, an, it's just in name only. Mm -hmm. And the health officer is required by the state of Vermont. Mm -hmm. And they also can't be involved. A lot of them, if they haven't had the training, they can't be involved because of the town insurance. That's right. Mm -hmm. And right. when we opted to hire uh, the sheriff's department to, co to cover our town for certain needs and traffic control, um, that's when we didn't have constables that had uh, authority anymore. So we switched over to having a constable like when we had Tom Simpson, um, who was trained, and Mark Blau, who was trained, we switched the, that over to the sheriff's department, and they took over those responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And this is this is the situation with m most towns in in the state. Right. right. So why do we still have a budget for those if we can't use them? The the constable budget. The, the it's a salary of five hundred for the constable. A salary budget for five hundred for your health officer. A salary budget five hundred for your. They, they, they do put in the hours. Um, and they, they do get their personal vehicles. At any time. Traffic control. They, they use their personal right. vehicles, and their descriptions um, are in our town report of right. all the officers right. and what their responsibilities are. I know the constables is. I think the health. <coughs> I'm not sure about the health officer. Okay. Right. So, here we go. Health officer appointed by the commissioner of health to a three-year term recommended by the select board, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. 
Constable, first if you're and second. lucky enough to find somebody who'll do it. Oh, I understand. That's a big thing. <laughs> but uh, what I want to know is if we're having all the money in our budget for this and we can't use them, why do we? What is it, $500? We use them for various yeah. different reasons. What do we use so, them for? You just like, said you can't use them because they're not they, trained. They're, they're, no, they I said constable. When, so when like, we have, like... Fourth of July. They requested <laughs> them for traffic control out here when we had hazardous waste con collection. Mm -hmm. So the traffic can... Do they have hazardous waste traffic control training? No, they're just they're uh, just doing the think traffic you're... control when in the parking lot. Well, make that's sure okay, but they're dealing with and... hazardous waste. No, so they, they don't, don't deal with it. They don't deal with it. We already, we already have people the, that are the group that that does the hazardous waste come and they request. So, do those two people know what to do if there's a hazardous waste spill here with the traffic that they have out here? No, they're not responsible no, fire for that. The fire department's responsible for that. But do they? Do your constables know what to do? They, don't have they, that. they would call the fire department. Yeah. Right. Yes, they do know what to do. They, they, they just want to keep the traffic moving. Okay, thank you, Patty. <laughs> okay, so we go on. At the end, the uh, constables are put into position by who? Appointed by the select board. Okay, and, and what are they able to do? They can pick up dead animals on the side of the road. Um, they, can, they can serve civil papers mm -hmm. if they so choose to. Um, there was a time when they would stand guard over the school dances, but we don't have any of those anymore. Um, and and um, traffic control. I'm not sure if there's anything else in there. And it's still says. required by statute. It's required that yes. towns have constables. Yes. Stockbridge also has constables in name only. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think they do up in. They Hansel. also have. Uh, the ability to assist the health officer in the discharge of his or her duties, destroy unlicensed dogs, kill injured deer, remove disorderly people from town meetings, which you could probably call me that if you wanted. Um, if the first constable can, he can also collect taxes and no collecting available, blah, blah, blah. Animal control officers appointed by who? By well, the select, select board. board. Okay. And he enforces the ordinance and cares for the animals that are impounded within the town. Who impounds them in the town if the animal, the animal control, control officer, officer impounds them, but they go over to Middlebury? Right. No, the animal control officer cannot impound a dog here. He's not trained. Right. But he has, he'll call to get assistance to. Most get of the them. time, it's a lost mm -hmm. dog that is, that is, mm -hmm. someone found a lost dog and they call the animal control officer. He picks up the lost dog and he brings it to Middlebury if the owner's not located. Okay. Appointed by the select board, the humane officer, enforces state and federal regulations surrounding the humane and proper treatment of all animals. Works closely with animal control officers and constables. So we've got all these things in play that, oh, if you had an issue, you'd call these people. You can't. But in the whole town, you can't you can't call any of these people. But we went to the next step and and referred to the sheriff who does have the authority. Correct. And I'm I'm how how far into this now? And another another person's family is being. Did you is, relay that to the to the uh, Did they relay it to the sheriff's office? They're to working the, on it right now with their paperwork. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, yeah. Again, you know, because they have no place to go with their town because their town tells them can't do nothing. Well, we really can't. Actually, we're we're bound by the rules and we can't do that. But now the, the state cop had told me he told you to call him if you continued to have issues. Did he? Uh, the state cop didn't really tell me to call anybody but the sheriffs. And that's who I called was the sheriffs. And I've been in contact with two deputies and the main sheriff down there, Ryan. Sheriff Palmer. Yeah, Ryan Palmer. Yeah. So everything that I have is going directly through the, that person right now, those people. Right. And it's all being documented. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. It's all being documented. Yep. That's good. By the sheriffs, yep. So, again, I still want to know why we have all these extra costs. Yes, $500. I know that's not a lot of money to a lot of people, but no, to some people it really is. Statutes require 
a person. It's just like a fence viewer. Right. They used to require fence viewers. They don't yeah. require them any longer. Let's go back here to this here, because I want to know how, if they're only allowed to do so many things, but we got budgeted $500 there, and all of a sudden we're using the entire $500. But they I can only do so much, so what are they doing? for use of car, use of vehicles. A use of car, a use of vehicles. They use their personal vehicles. Hmm. And in, didn't the town have a vehicle at one point in time? Sold it. Well, the constable used to. We used to when we had a full-time constable, but we don't have one. We sold it to anymore. Randolph. Oh. Okay. So are we paying for their insurance then? On their personal vehicle? Well, no. I'm sure it's not their total insurance, but we're paying them for the my per, for mileage, for the use of their personal vehicles. Uh, and that now, mean, that, aren't both that constables us your from relative? Having them on our insurance policy. Are both constables your relative, though? Yes, they are. Did you place them there? I was on the select board when they were appointed, but I believe I recused myself from that vote. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. <clears throat> okay. So, who does the animal fines in town then? Animal fines. Yeah, fines animal fines. Fines for not being licensed? I, I don't know. Whatever the fines are that you have, animal fines. That's the animal fines in the budget are for late dog licenses. Yeah, yeah. Dog licensing. That's, it. Yeah. that's it. And who is allowed to actually enforce that? You, you two here at the office can enforce that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the treasurer. No. Okay. And I call it's, upon Jeff when people state. ignore me state statute because it mm -hmm. anything after a certain date we add the extra on and they still have to license their dog but they now have to pay an extra fee okay okay yeah i just you know things come up and it just doesn't make sense you know some of it just doesn't make sense to me we've got all this stuff that you say we're bound by the state to have we are but the town can't use those people for anything in the town. That's, that's kind of sad to me, that I have to take and use a sheriff for this instance. Well, we Considering paid, we I'm pretty sure you guys too. could have handled it a lot sooner. <laughs> well, we pay the sheriff pretty good too. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's for sure. Yeah, I've seen that price too. I, I just, I don't know. Some, some things just don't make sense to me as to why we have them, but we can't use them. The health yeah. officer is used for a variety of different reasons. Um, you know, if somebody's just not doing anything sanitary in their yard, if their septic is overflowing, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different reasons. We and who's could our health officer right now? John White. John White. No, he is not. Your site says he resigned. We haven't. We haven't appointed. We haven't yet, got those so all of the points. So he lied to me now. Just now. He accepted his resignation. He told me John he White. Was. John White resigned. He, he, I can't he contact was. him. He was the. Was. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And we haven't he made the appointments his. this year because we haven't had a full board to do it. Yeah. Since town meeting, so we've been, people have been on vacation and haven't been here, so and we, our agenda has been crazy. So that's okay. all. Are you throwing your hat in the ring? Uh -huh. Would you like to be the health officer? <laughs> for this town? Or we're looking for a new one. No, not for this town. Okay. Not at this point in time. Not unless something changes drastically. Uh. All right. At this point in time, I guess the last thing I have to say is I just want to thank you, Frank, for what you've done, Julie, for what you've done. Yep. Um, Jeff Brown's done a great job, too. He actually came up to speak to me about joining the American Legion. I have. And at the same time, he witnessed one of those lily dog events, tried to bite his ass. You're good. So <laughs> my neighbor's dog chased it back up and came back, sat down by us. That was kind of nice. <laughs> Well, I so hope, I, hope I also would like to say here in front of everybody, thank the sheriff's department for everything they're doing as well. And I'm going to sit in on the rest of the meeting. If oh. you guys don't mind, thank you. Yeah, sure. No, that's fine. Uh, uh, let's see, where are we? I guess we're at the department reports. <clears throat> Is anybody from the library? No. No. In the highway, we got through the storm. 
basically we didn't break down anything but we have are having trouble with the 550 again um, there is a tentative date set for the work on the Bethel Mountain Road which is April 22nd at this point We're trying to coincide with Bethel's shutdown for their side um, <clears throat> we're not really positive, but that's the date that Jay McDonald has given the town of Bethel. They have to replace a big culvert there. It looks like it'll be a three to four day shutdown. Um, but when it's more uh, solid in a date, we'll have to get the signage and do all that. We least least like it to be a, a, at least up a week before the shutdown so it's only two weeks away mm -hmm. yeah i know it's are right we, it's right up i know are we doing anything on our side we are we're going to do the rogers brook at the time okay that's a culvert yes it is so excuse me um, yes, Mark. frank yes um, this I hadn't known about this Bethel Mountain Road um, shutdown. So is it going to be like the last time? Obviously, you can't. Nobody can get through from either side. That's correct. We're we're kind of okay, working. And so you're but you're saying you're thinking it's possibly only three to four days. That's correct. That's okay, the. And what exactly that. is the is the work and where on it, Bethel Mountain it's Road? It's a culvert replacement on Rogers Brook. On the Rochester side on the Rochester side and on on the other side they're replacing a, a large culvert uh, below the uh, sergeant trailer park and large we're, culvert yeah replacement on the side too okay thank you yep yeah. and well, it's tentative, tentatively for April 22nd they're talking but they weren't sure because they weren't sure of the weather and all that, so they were waiting. Yes. Will they be putting signs up again and having them we, identified as We're We're going to be responsible for this side, and Bethel's going to be responsible for the other side. So we'll take care of the signs on this side, and they'll take care of the signs on the other side. That's the and we have a grant for that. <clears throat> For that replacement. Great. Good, Frank. And utilities? Terry, got anything? <laughs> Septic at the town office, yeah. perhaps? <laughs> Hopefully, we'll have that figured tomorrow. Hopefully, fixed, but I'll tell you better tomorrow. Is Jeff there? Um, no, but Brian did just join from Two Rivers. Okay, I guess we can go back to him then. Brian, <coughs> how you doing? Hello. Hey, how good. are you? I'm good. How are you guys? We're good. Pretty good. Uh, you want to talk about you're here for the scope of work for the regional planning commission for the town of rochester on the capital budget program service is that correct yep yep that is correct and i've read through your statement of work um and you want to kind of elaborate on what you're want to do there sure um so if everyone has a copy of the statement of work um, or the contract itself, you can pull that out and look at it. Uh, so I'll refer to it a little bit. So this is a um, contract that's funded through uh, the MTAP program, that's the Municipal Technical Assistance Program. Um, it'll be for $12,000, uh, and this contract will run until the end of September. Uh, and the, the scope of the project, which if you go down to the uh, attachment A, that's the scope there. Yep. Um, but this will assist the town in creating a 10-year capital budget, which will be basically an update of the old 10-year capital budget that Two Rivers worked on back in 2015 for the town of Rochester. Um, so the work proposed in here is very similar to the work that was done to create that capital budget. It'll be uh, talking to different town staff about uh, potential capital project ideas 
uh, identifying costs or estimating the cost for those projects and then looking into potential funding sources. Uh, and then ultimately uh, taking all of that information, compiling it together into a budget and then compiling also a report which will elaborate on each of the capital projects in more detail. Um, so that's the uh, basically an overview of the scope of the work and the contract itself. Mm -hmm. And that'll be completed in sep by September. Is that correct? That's I think it will be. At? If if not, we can um, amend the contract with the state that is providing us the funding to extend the uh, contract period. Okay. I I, can't, I read through this. It's a, you know it's something we need to do as a town in order to continue to seek grants for any road work or anything else that comes up. Yes, so it's we kind do. of a necessity mm -hmm. uh, to move forward with it. Mm -hmm. So I I guess uh, I move to approve this. I second that. Uh, and all in favor? Aye. Aye. So we'll uh, be in touch and go to go, work. Go to work. And we'll yeah, move forward. I can follow up to schedule a kickoff meeting to start the project. Okay. We'll sign the papers and send them to you. And when Dune's here, he's got to sign them, but being the chairman, so. Okay. okay. Yep, that's perfect. All right. Thank Very you. good. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Yep. Look forward to working with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll reach out uh, probably tomorrow to set up a kickoff meeting, which will probably uh, happen at another select board. Okay, hearing Perfect. Or like we're meeting in the future. Yep. Very good. Thank you. All right. Take care, everyone. Hope you had a good eclipse day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we did. Traffic. <laughs> uh, grants. Grants. Um, all I have is just to let you know that we did receive both of our FEMA Cat C reimbursements for a total of eight thousand seven hundred sixty-six dollars and fifty-three cents. Um, I still have out there the category A for North Hollow. Um, that one's being stubborn, so I'm still working on that one. And we'll be opening up the Cat Z, which is my administrative time. Um, we'll be opening that up within the next couple of weeks. I'll keep you posted. Okay, good job um, in collecting. Excuse, excuse me, Kristen. What? I didn't get the exact name of the grant. I'm sorry. I got the amount, eight thousand seven hundred sixty-six fifty-three. What were you said? Both of the what grants? It's the FEMA, FEMA. grant. Our Cat C. Uh, Cat C grants. Um, spell it. For Category C. Cat C. Capital C, capital A, capital T, and then C. Correct. I'm confusing. It's like you could say Category C. Okay, Category C. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I just want to make sure I get this right. Categ so you received both the Category C grants uh, for a total of 8766 Yeah, you want to say from FEMA in there just so that's clear that that money did come from FEMA for the July store. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yep. And that's all I have. Okay. Um, we are looking into writing another grant for the upper part of Bethel Mountain Road. Um, we haven't finalized it yet. I'm hoping to get it in by tomorrow, but we may not. But at least it'll be a shovel-ready project so we can apply for monies next year to fix that upper section there. Almost... Uh, well, about 5,000 feet from the Bethel town line to where Rogers Brook is going in. Um, so we're look, we're doing the paperwork on that present. I've got most of it ready, I think. Do you think it's that to happen next year? We're hoping to. Would that be another type of close down on the road, or is that going to be? Uh, no, that that just... would be something that we would we would be able to do. We have to. Re there's a. I think it's six culverts on the top there mm -hmm. that we would be replacing, but it wouldn't be a shut total shutdown. Mm -hmm. And then we're looking at trying to grind the pavement and and then resurface. So you still have access coming through. Yeah, it it's we wouldn't be closing it down. This is a. The reason why we're closing it down this time is Rogers Brook is a, is a small, it's the 
largest stream near the top, but it's mm -hmm. not that big. But it's it's something that's been in the works since Irene, yeah. and we're replacing it with a four foot culvert. I think it's a two foot there now. Um, it's quite long. It's it sticks out twenty seven feet on the east side of the road, and so it's really a long culvert. And I think when they originally tarred that road, it looked like to me like that road shifted downhill to make that corner a little better. Mm -hmm. And I th think that's probably the original road was out that far. But uh, <clears throat> so that we're gonna we've got a grant to fix that culvert. So we're gonna do that and coincide with Bethel's working on their side. So and that's can, going to be a total close, shut down the whole time. Yes, yeah. three to four days. And, and somewhere's they, somewhere's. Yeah, next we're, week. We're thinking the twenty second. That was a tentative date that Jay McDonald, who's doing the work in Bethel, gave us. So, so basically the week of that, roughly. Yeah, for three or four days, maximum. Okay. So, and any old business? No. Nope. Or local hazard mitigation plan. We have to put to probably put together a committee and stuff, but there'll be more information coming okay. on that. On the mitigation plan? Yep. I meant to put that on there. Sorry. Okay. Uh, any public comments? You all set on the computer? Yep, they look good. Okay. Then I guess if anybody got anything else? I move to adjourn. <coughs> I second it. All in favor. All right. Hi. Have a Thank evening. you all for coming. Uh, uh, let's see, where are we? I guess we're at the department reports. <coughs> Is anybody from the library? No. No. In the highway, we got through the storm, basically. We didn't break down anything, but we have are having trouble with the 550 again. Um, there is a tentative date set for the work on the Bethel Mountain Road, which is April 22nd at this point. We're trying to coincide with Bethel's shutdown for their side. Um, <clears throat> we're not really positive, but that's the date that Jay McDonald has given the town of Bethel. They have to replace a big culvert there. It looks like it'll be a three to four day shutdown. Um, but when it's more uh, solid in a date, we'll have to get the signage and do all that. We'd least, least like it to be uh, uh, at least up a week before the shutdown, so. It's only two weeks away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. It's are right we, It's right up, I know. Are we doing anything on our side? We are, we're gonna do the Rogers Brook at the time. Okay, that's a culvert? Yes, it is. So, excuse me. Um, yes, Mark. Frank? Yes. Um, this I hadn't known about this Bethlehem Mountain Road um, shutdown. So is it going to be like the last time? Obviously, you can't. Nobody can get through from either side. That's correct. We're we're kind of okay, working. And so you're, but you're saying you're thinking it's possibly only three to four days. That's correct. That's okay, the. And what exactly that. is the is the work and where on Bethlehem Mountain Road? It's a culvert replacement on Rogers Brook. On the Rochester side. On the Rochester side, and on on the other side, they're replacing a, a large culvert uh, below the uh, Sergeant Trailer Park. And large we're, culvert. Yeah. Replacement on the side too. Okay, thank you. Yep. And well, it's like, tentative, tentatively for April twenty second. They're talking, but they weren't sure because they weren't sure of the weather and all that, so they were waiting. Yes. Will they be putting signs up again and having them we, identified as We're We're going to be responsible for this side, and Bethel's going to be responsible for the other side. So we'll take care of the signs on this side, 
and they'll take care of the signs on the other side. That's the and we have a grant for that, <clears throat> for that replacement. Great. Good, Frank. And utilities, Terry, you got anything? <laughs> Septic at the town office, <laughs> yeah. perhaps. <laughs> Hopefully we'll have that figured tomorrow. Hopefully fixed, but. Tell you better tomorrow. Is Jeff there? Um, no, but Brian did just join from Two Rivers. Okay, I guess we can go back to him then. Brian, <coughs> how you doing? Hello. Hey, how good. are you? I'm good. How are you guys? We're good. Pretty good. Uh, you want to? talk about you're here for the scope of work for the Regional Planning Commission for the Town of Rochester on the Capital Budget Program Service. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. That is correct. And I've read through your statement of work. Um, and you want to kind of elaborate on what you want to do there? Sure. Um, so if everyone has a copy of the statement of work, um, or the contract itself, you can pull that out and look at it. Uh, so I'll refer to it a little bit. So this is a um, contract that's funded through uh, the MTAP program, that's the Municipal Technical Assistance Program. Um, it'll be for $12,000, uh, and this contract will run until the end of September. Uh, and the, the scope of the project, which if you go down to the uh, attachment A, that's the scope there. Yep. Um, but this will assist the town in creating a 10-year capital budget, which will be basically an update of the old 10-year capital budget that Two Rivers worked on back in 2015 for the town of Rochester. Um, so the work proposed in here is very similar to the work that was done to create that capital budget. It'll be uh, talking to different town staff about uh, potential capital project ideas. Uh, identifying costs or estimating the cost for those projects and then looking into potential funding sources uh, and then ultimately uh, taking all of that information compiling it together into a budget and then compiling also a report which will elaborate on each of the capital projects in more detail um, so that's the uh, basically an overview of the scope of the work and the contract itself mm -hmm. and that'll be completed in sep by September is that correct that's I think it will be at? If, if not, we can um, amend the contract with the state that is providing us the funding to extend the uh, contract period. Okay. I, I, I read through this. It's, a, you know, it's something we need to do as a town in order to continue to seek grants for any road work or anything else that comes up. Yes, so it's we kind do. of a necessity mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to move forward with it. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess... Uh, I move to approve this. I second that. Uh, and all in favor? Aye. Aye. So we'll uh, be in touch and go to go, work. Go to work. And we'll yeah, move forward. Yeah, I can follow up to schedule a kickoff meeting to start the project. Okay. We'll sign the papers and send them to you. And when Dune's here, he's got to sign them, but being the chairman, so. Okay. Okay. Yep, that's perfect. All right. Thank Very you. good. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Yep. Look forward to working with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll reach out uh, probably tomorrow to set up a kickoff meeting, which will probably uh, happen at another select board. Okay. okay. Here perfect. Here a select board meeting in the future. Yep. Very good. Thank you. All right. Take care, everyone. Hope you had a good eclipse day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we did. Traffic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Grants. Grants. Um, all I have is just to let you know that we did receive both of our FEMA Cat C reimbursements for a total of $8,766.53. Um, I still have out there the Category A for North Hollow. Um, that one's being stubborn, so I'm still working on that one. And we'll be opening up the Cat Z, which is my administrative time. 
um, we'll be opening that up within the next couple of weeks. I'll keep you posted. Okay, good job um, collecting. Excuse, excuse me, Kristen, what? I didn't get the exact name of the grant, I'm sorry. I got the amount, 8766.53. What were, you said both of the, what grants? It's the FEMA, FEMA. grant, or CAT C. Uh, CAT C grants? Um, spell it. Category C, CAT C. Capital C, capital A, capital T, and then C? Correct. I'm confusing. It's like, you could say category C. Okay, category C. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I just want to make sure I get this right. Cate so you received both the category C grants uh, for a total of 8766.53. Yeah, you want to say from FEMA in there just so that's clear that that money did come from FEMA for the July store. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yep. And that's all I have. Okay. Um, we are looking into writing another grant for the upper part of Bethel Mountain Road. Um, we haven't finalized it yet. I'm hoping to get it in by tomorrow, but we may not. But at least it'll be a shovel-ready project so we can apply for monies next year to fix that upper section there. Almost, uh, well, about 5,000 feet feet from the Bethel town line to where Rogers Brook is going in. Um, so we're look, we're doing the paperwork on that present. I've got most of it ready, I think. Do you think of that to happen next year? We're hoping to. Would that be another type of close down on the road or is that going to be? Uh, no, that, that would be something that we would we would be able to do. We have to, re there's a, I think it's six culverts on the top there mm -hmm. that we would be replacing, but it wouldn't be a shut total shutdown. Mm -hmm. And then we're looking at trying to grind the pavement and, and then resurface. So you still have access coming through? It, yeah, it, it's, we wouldn't be closing it down. This is a, the reason why we're closing it down this time is Rogers Brook is a, is a small, it's the largest stream near the top, but mm -hmm. it's not that big. But it's it's something that's been in the works since Irene, yep. and we're replacing it with a four foot culvert. I think it's a two foot there now. Um, it's quite long. It's it sticks out 27 feet on the east side of the road, and so it's really a long culvert. And I think when they originally tarred that road, it looked like to me like that road shifted downhill to make that corner a little better, mm -hmm. and I th think. That's probably the original road was out that far, but uh, <clears throat> so that we're gonna we've got a grant to fix that culvert, so we're gonna do that and coincide with Bethel's working on their side. So and that's can, gonna be a total close, shut down the whole time. Yes, yeah, three to four days. And, and somewhere's they, somewhere's yeah next we're, week. We're thinking the twenty second. That was a tentative date that Jay McDonald, who's doing the work in Bethel, gave us so so basically the week of that roughly yeah for three or four days maximum okay so and any old business well, one, oh. or local hazard mitigation plan we have to put to probably put together a committee and stuff but there'll be more information coming okay on that on the mitigation plan? Yep. I meant to put that on there, sorry. Okay. Uh, any public comments? You all set on the computer? Yep, they look good. Okay, then I guess if Anybody got anything else? I move to adjourn. <clears throat> I second it. All in favor. All right. Aye. Have a lovely Thank you all for coming. Day.